Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our midweek Bible study this week at Waterford Church of the Nazarene. I apologize that I was not able to be presenting the lesson yesterday. I didn't have a voice, so rather than torture you with that, I decided to wait and submit the lesson today. Our lesson this week, as we continue to look at the Ten Commandments, is naming the name. We honor God's name not just by the words we use, but also by the way that we live. This lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 20, verse 7, and Ezekiel chapter 36, 16 to 27. Exodus 20, verse 7 reads, You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. This verse is something that we need to learn to take very seriously in our culture again. God's name needs to be held in the same reverence that it was at the time when this scripture was written. The awe that the Jews felt in regards to God's holy name was so great that they would not even utter, utter it. They were afraid they would be guilty of blaspheming to just not use God's name in the right way. It was often referred to as the word that was written, but not read. We really have to be aware of three types of profanity when we're dealing with the name of God. God's name is not to be trifled with. As we, it should, its only use should really be in our worship or in a sense that when we're talking about him, that we are offering worship to his name, not something that should just be a light part of our conversation. Especially this comes to the matter, uh, I've often heard people not even really say seriously, but yet May God strike me dead if I'm telling a lie. This is misusing the name of God. As a matter of character, if God is dwelling in our hearts, then letting our yes be yes and our no be no should be sufficient. Should be sufficient. If we have to call on the name of God to somehow boister up what we are saying within ourselves, then that shows a real lack of character in our part. God's name is not something to be trashed. God's name is also not something to be trivialized. You know, sports figures are often paid huge amounts of money for product endorsements, for someone to have the right to uh, call a tennis shoe after the name of a sports figure, or for someone else to just attach their name to something. It's supposed to add a little bit of quality to what something is. Well, we constantly need to be on guard to make sure that we are not taking our own thoughts and desires and ascribing them to God. I have a sneaky feeling that many times over the years when someone says, God told me to say this or God told me to say that, um, I fear that sometimes instead of God really speaking for someone to say something, it's more a matter of we want someone to really get a hold of something that we are saying. And therefore, we say, God told me to say this. Well, if God hasn't, if it's just our own, how can I say this? I think God sometimes gets blamed for our overzealousness. The book of Ezekiel, verses 16 to 23, 
The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was like the uncleanness of a woman in her menstrual period. So I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, whenever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. The biggest sin of the people is they were dishonoring God's holy name. It said the Israelites had defiled themselves with blood, and had defiled the land with idols. The Israelites had become a people of violence, killing for their own for their own sake, not fighting one of the battles that God told them they needed to fight. But God had defiled them the Israelites had defiled themselves with the blood and then by worshiping pagan idols and setting up articles of stone and wood and offering their worship there instead of in the holy temple where God's presence had dwelt. These actions had given God a bad name among the other nations that saw it. Somehow they saw not God's people at that time and as we are today are to re God's character. Not that as humans we are perfect, but if we are living as the people of God, we are supposed to give some semblance of living in, in the lifestyle that God would have us to live. The actions of God's people did not reflect the character of the God that they said they worshiped. Then God further through Ezekiel gave the message starting at verse 21. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and will bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. God's gracious cleansing. God would respond to the mistreatment he received with grace. The people of Israel deserved to be destroyed. He did destroy them, but he didn't forever wipe them out. He offered them grace when he would be able to return the people to their land. He was not going to destroy the people, but purify them. Therefore, it was necessary for them to be away from their homeland for a certain period of time, but yet his grace would continue to reach out. God's grace is likewise offered to us. He offers the infilling of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit comes upon us to make us like him. 
he wants to take the heart of stone, which is ingrained in us, and replace it with a heart of flesh, one through whom he can speak, one through whom he can shape and mold into something. The beautiful thing about serving him is we can never have reached a spot where we have gone too far away from him in the sins that we have committed, but what he doesn't want to bring us back and draw us unto himself. Will we let him do that? Will we receive the grace that he offers so that we truly can become the people he wants us to be by honoring his holy name and showing his name to be holy because of the work that he does through those who call upon his name. Let's bow for a moment of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word and for what it means. We would ask that you would help us to be your people, to live like your people, to be guided by the power of your hand. Just watch over and guide and protect. Your holy name we do ask it. 